We're here with Andre Ang from House of Knives. Thanks for joining us today. And you're going to tell us a little bit about carving a roast perfectly. This absolutely. is the season. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Holidays isn't about the, for me, the sweets, it's about the meat. That's yeah. <laughs> it's about the meat. And this smells really good, I yep, have to tell came you. came out of the oven uh, about an hour ago. Uh -huh. So there's some keys to it, not just in terms of how to carve it, but okay. even some of that preparation. So sure. kind of five easy steps. So one of the first things we always recommend, and I've been doing it for years, is use a good liner in your roasting pan because there's nothing worse. Mm. Your gravy is only as good as your drippings. And if they get all burned on there, they're no good. So this is a um, heat resistant, stain resistant, non-stick sure. mat here. So you can see the drippings don't stick to it. It makes it easy for cleanup Perfect. as well as great gravy. Okay. So Second step, you don't want to undercook your meat or overcook, right? Meat is not getting any less expensive. <laughs> so there's no better investment than a good meat thermometer. One like this stays in the meat during the whole cooking process. Okay. And you take it out about 10 degrees to whatever desired doneness you want. Ah, so because it'll you'll let it rest. And you want less, and that's number three, let it rest. So this has rested for about an hour now. I recommend okay. at least 30 minutes of time because what it okay. does, whether you're doing poultry or meat, it reabsorbs all the juices mm -hmm. back into meat. And there's nothing worse than dried out meat. Yeah, don't want that. <laughs> now, the, the third thing apart from that is roasting method. So I'm a big believer of what they call reverse sear. Have you heard of that? No. So no. it's basically roasting at a very low temperature. So I roast this at 200 degrees only. Really? So for the last 10 minutes, then I crank it up to about 400 to kind of give it that color. Oh. And what it does, it just, you know, there's been tons of stats and studies proven that yeah. meat is more tender when you do it at a low temperature. Sure. But how long did you cook it though? So for this 200? one was about wow. uh, three, almost three and a half hours, okay. which is a lot for a small roast like this. About yes, it is. Primary. But it yeah. smells. I wish you could yeah, smell it. Makes it. Great. Oh my goodness. And then step number four, so before we actually go to carve it, is, of course, uh, the most important thing is the knife. Okay, so, joke, yes. It's all about the knife. <laughs> about the, not this big one over here. Well, you no, could we use that one, but that look one's actually thing. not too sharp. Look at, yeah, look at this thing. It's hilarious. So when you talk about using the correct tool, you want uh, a good carving knife is long, slender, thin and sharp. Okay. Now, what's important is to make sure it's sharp. I always tell people it doesn't matter what quality knife you have, if it's not sharp, it, it's useless. This is so true. <laughs> so, one of the most common things you want to use to help maintain it is a, a steel. It can't resharpen a knife, it helps maintain it. And the reason why I bring my big friends here is because nobody knows how to use a steel <laughs> properly. So, because we're all staring at our Mark, smartphones and we can't see here them. Here we well. go. <laughs> Just a very quick tip, vertically upright on your cutting board, okay. so it's all about the correct angle. It's 9 degrees, 45, 22 and a half. You want to bring in a smidgen from there, and it's basically 15 to 20 degrees from heel to tip, down one side of the steel, then alternate on the other side of the steel. And basically doing that, we recommend for all your knives, once or twice a week, will help maintain Really? Once or twice a week? Yeah, most people don't do it until their knives are dull and then yeah, it's too no. late. <laughs> so one of our other really popular things is some, some people have dexterity issues and have problem with using steel, so using the carving knife, you can also use okay. this great suction cup sharpener oh. that you just put your knife through and just draw it through and that simulates the same idea as using your steel. Oh, Very like easy. That. So, That's great. are you ready to do some carving? Sure. Jennifer? Let's do so, this. for time purposes, I, this prime rib came out. We already cut off the bones here to save time. So, these okay. bones, if you've got a relative who loves bone, rib bones, it's great, or just mm -hmm. make a soup with it. So, we take off our ties. Okay. Now, the other thing a lot of people don't realize, especially when you're cutting uh, a smaller roast, is there's a certain methodology in terms of how you want to slice the meat. Are you aware of this? No. So, you always want to um, cross grain cut your meat. This is why you're here. Okay, great. <laughs> so, basically, uh, as a general rule, the direction that the meat's tied, that's the direction you want to carve the meat. A lot of people buy oh. small roast, like let's say this was half the size. Mm -hmm. Some people would just flop it on its side and start cutting yes. away. But it actually makes your meat uh, not as tender. It makes it chewier when you cut it. So all the grain okay. or structure of the meat is running the same way. 95% of the time the butcher will tie it in the way the grain goes. So in this case here, we want to turn this meat here, okay. right? And we're going to cut it across this way. All right. So let's take our sturdy carving knife. Now this the key one? is, okay. Is that beautiful knife? So it's that's very, uh, the hot trend now is Corey. these Japanese knives. E Cory. Yep, brand is Cory Artisan. So this has a hand hammered finish, and what that does as well, it creates air pockets so the food won't stick to the blade. Okay. So that's made with 37 layers go. of steel. 37 so, layers, wow. Yeah, it's wow. remarkable. So okay. how do you like your, your meat cut? I, generally, I Not prefer too. both half an inch or three quarter yeah, inch like thickness, something. depending okay. on how you oh, like to go. Now I have to get, well, do you have a ruler? You, okay, so <laughs> this way? Yeah. Am I holding this right? Yep, technique looks good. This? Is that too thin? Uh, no, that looks well good. All right. People always fight over oh, the end. Oh, and I might, do right. I just, yep, yeah, they just do. Just keep on going. That's the best piece. How's that look? Oh, that's beautiful. Pretty nice. And look at this, like, butter. 
it's like bottom so one line thing you through. never want to do you know uh, I'm glad do I didn't hear you swearing today of <laughs> saying electric knives or serrated knives <laughs> so I brought along showing because a lot of people ask well should I use a plain edge knife or a serrated knife right plain edge always performs and cuts better it doesn't tear the meat because I agree. when you use anything like uh, you know a serrated blade it's almost like cutting it with a saw and then becomes uh, drier as a result of it because it rips the fibers it's of the shredding meat. it all it shreds it now so put a this? piece on the plate here I'm going to show you something else as we talk okay. about the importance of a mm -hmm. good edge what? This so would be about the size of plate my daughter would have because she loves meat. But this would be her <laughs> dinner plate. So we've got some gravy there we can enjoy it with. So that being said, in terms of pouring the edge, what type of steak knife do you use um, when you cut your meat? Steak knives. Steak knife. I yeah. bet you they look similar to this. Something like that, yes. Yeah, a lot of teeth. So I want you to, uh, a huge trend now that's okay. growing uh, attention. Get rid of the teeth. Is getting rid of the teeth, right? People, people who love, love, love a great steak or prime rib, the bucket list thing I always tell them, okay. you have to enjoy it with a plain edge steak knife. There's nothing else like it. So try cutting it with a traditional All steak right. knife. And oh, so you're gonna, <laughs> oh, sorry, the other, the other knife. Proper dinner for um, And so we're running out of time here a little bit. You have your gravy and we'll, oh yeah, yeah, that, it doesn't we'll go as nicely. One. All right, let's see. Oh. You know, the experience I tell easy. people, if you love wine, which a lot of people do, right? It's okay. like going to a restaurant and having a, your favorite it's bottle of wine and styrofoam cup or a beautiful glass. It's the same type of experience, isn't it? There you go. Thank you so much, Andre. <laughs> this You're welcome, is Jennifer. fantastic. Get your straight edge knives and keep them sharp. Just get a yeah, smaller They're more eco friendly because you can get them sharpened over and over again. <laughs> awesome. Stay with us. We have much more coming up.